Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. So today we have a new ESC and it's from T-Motor. Now this is called the F30A. I mean, many of you have seen this before and you say, well, what's so new about this one? Well, this one, well, actually T-Motor decided to keep the names, the, the naming for some reason exactly the same and add the BL Holly 32 badge. So this is a BL Holly 32 ESC and it's the F30A, which is a 30 amp ESC from T-Motor, rated two to four S LiPo. Its weight is around six grams. They're stating 5.62 grams. However, when you cut the wires, you know, obviously you would drop some of that weight and all the wires are silicone. And we do have a beautiful telemetry pad, which is hella close to the capacitor. And you're gonna have some I think you will have a hard time putting that there. I'm sure I'll probably run into some problems adding my wire right there But you know, there you go. It does have telemetry So let's go ahead and take a look at the filtration here. We have how many caps one two three Four five six seven eight. That's pretty good. That's decent. We have a nice fat tantalum capacitor always a big plus and We have these three little ICs here now some of you might mistake this for MOSFETs, but actually they're not MOSFETs so let's go ahead and take a look at this ESC that I recently reviewed, actually yesterday. Now, um, this one performed slightly better in voltage drops and voltage spikes, and I still said this one is better. Now why would I say such thing? Well, I'll get into that in a little bit. So this one has its MOSFETs here, it has two MOSFETs per phase, which gives it a total of six. So we have six MOSFETs here. We also have the same, which is to be expected, and this is how all ESCs work. However, when you flip it here, you have two extra, three extra chips here. Now, what are these for? These are actually dedicated FET drivers. So these, these are dedicated drivers to actually make the MOSFETs do their work. However, most of the other ESCs, some of them, uh, will just do everything from the, let's just say, the 32-bit chip. However, this is a BB2 chip. This is a DSHOT 600. So now back to my point. Why did I say this one's better, and why did I rate it 0.5 more than the Emacs Bullet? This got a 7, this got a 7.5. Well, this one here, since it's running a faster microcontroller unit, and what I've noticed on BL Holly 32 ESCs, is that the faster the microcontroller unit, the better it catches its phases correctly. So, for example, how, how can I explain this? Um, on the DSHOT 600, it's limited. It's, it's less than, it's way less than half the speed of the microcontroller unit here. Let's just say CPU. Maybe that will make it a little bit easier. So this one's like maybe four times plus faster than this one. Now, uh, what does that affect? Well, this affects many things. For example, every time the motor spins, this is actually taking measurements of how to apply voltage or to what phase and where to get the motor to do exactly what you want. However, sometimes you might have a little hiccup where it wants to do something and it wants to correct it, but it's too late and it does something else and it causes this weird, you know, amount of noise jitter thing that just gets pushed back everywhere and all that kind of stuff. However, this one here, since it's a BL-32 ESCs, once you start increasing the PWM frequency on the BL-32 software, it actually catches those things a lot better. So it has less chance of a hiccup, and which means less chance of problems. So this is why I rate this a little bit better. And I did notice a couple hiccups with this guy. This guy rarely, but if I increase the PWM frequency up to 24 or 48 kilohertz, I wouldn't see any of that, I'm pretty sure. So this is why I rate this guy a little bit better than this guy, but both of them are average. Um, and by average, what do I mean by average here? When I say average, that doesn't mean it's a terrible ESC or it's just an okay ESC. That means it's a pretty good ESC, hopefully it should be reliable. Average in bench testing, not real world testing. Real world testings have their own separate videos, which I will be doing for these two guys on the ESC testing quad. However, average means that they're pretty good. Uh, you do have some possibility of noise here and there. Some will report they've had amazing um, experience with them. Some will report terrible experience. But that all comes down to your setup and many things actually play into that whole setup. So overall, these should be pretty good. It's, I don't see it as money wasted, but that's I really can't say that just yet because I've not done the real world testing. But right now on the bench, they both seem pretty good. So... Yeah, this is the reason why I said these are slightly better, by 0.5 uh, better. So let's move this guy away now since we're done with him. And let's see this guy. Um, there's really right now nothing else I can really say about this. Uh, the telemetry pad, now you might say, okay, well it has telemetry, but I didn't see a current sensor. Well, because, you know, the telemetry is going to be, I believe, RPM 
possibly temperature. I think some of these even read their own temperature. I'm not sure. So don't expect current. We could possibly expect um, a voltage reading. Uh, I think so. I'm not really sure. I don't remember. But, you know, our, at a minimum, you could expect RPM at least. So possibly RPM, for sure RPM, possibly temperature and voltage. So that's what you could use the telemetry for. However, for me, personally, I do not see uh, myself taking the risk to actually putting a telemetry wire right there. You're going to either ground it or whatever this is, positive grounding. These two are going to, you have no idea how close these are. It's going to be a pain. And then you have this little guy back here. Super close. It's, it's insanely close. So, yeah, if you want to do that, do that at your own risk. But don't cry if you mess up. And, well, that's it, guys. Let's take it on the bench. Let's test it. Alright guys, so as you saw, it tested absolutely good, it's tested normal, average, nothing terrible about it. Um, it tests like any other average ESC, which was pretty good, I really didn't have much issues. You do have a probability of noise, and um, it's it's something normal every, every now and then. But overall, this was an average ESC, nothing too crazy, wow, and nothing terrible. So uh, I think this would be a good buy, and I, again, I want to know if anyone's used it, please let us know down in the comment section. Uh, we would really like to hear your experience and just to keep the community updated. And, well, that's it, guys. So that's going to conclude it for this video. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. And the DYS Aria is still the best ESC ever, in my opinion. All right, guys. See ya.